This video is going to be five things I love about Spokane and five things I hate about Spokane. So stick around. Hey, I hope you're doing well out there. My name is Phil Wells. I'm a real estate agent right in the heart of the city of Spokane. I'm going to give you five topics and discuss the pros and cons of each of those. I'm also going to give you a few things at the end that could be a pro, could be a con. It depends on you. Just by way of a little background on me, obviously I'm not a Spokane native, you can probably tell that. I've lived here for the past year, so I've got an outsider's perspective on what works in Spokane and what doesn't work. I've also gotten to know the city pretty well through my job and the people I've met along the way, so let's get into it. Okay, the first thing I love about Spokane is that there are endless activities to do here. You can go mountain biking in the summer, skiing in the winter, there's a ton of sports teams here, basketball, ice hockey, football. There's theatres, festivals and exhibitions happening here all the time. There are amazing lakes nearby that you can go and visit, such as Priest Lake and Coeur d'Alene. Every neighborhood has its own feel, so getting to know the character of each neighborhood is a really cool thing to do. The downtown neighborhood is absolutely thriving, with loads of bars, restaurants, and shopping. We're also only a four-hour drive to Seattle. There's so much to do here in Spokane that you'll never get bored, and that's one of the things I love about it. But there is a downside to that too, and that can be getting to where you're going when it's busy. Parking in downtown can be tricky at times, so it's best to get there early so you can guarantee that parking spot. The roads can also get pretty busy here and there's a lot of one-way systems in Spokane, particularly in the downtown area, so you may end up missing your turn more than once unless you're a really aggressive driver and can force your way over. Also, the city planners in Spokane seem to have gone out their way to make sure that no two intersections or junctions look or operate the same way, so driving here can be an experience. Just be patient, take your time, set off early, you'll be fine. Oh, that rhymes. If you go in somewhere remote to do an activity, you'll probably have no issues at all. But if you are doing something in a busy area like downtown, then just get there early. Again, you'll have no problems. The second thing I love about Spokane is how easy and quick it is to get around. With I-90 being the main arterial through Spokane, you can get most places pretty quick. Most journeys for me, and I'm someone that travels all over the city meeting clients and showing properties, the average journey for me is about 10 to 20 minutes to get where I want to go. There's also a great public transport system here in Spokane, so if you work at the Air Force Base, which for those of you who don't know is on the far west of the city, you can theoretically live in Liberty Lake and commute. I say theoretically because that would be a long commute, but I just wanted to prove the point. If you are moving to Spokane to work at Fairchild, please live closer to the base. That doesn't sound like a fun commute. There's also an Amtrak line running through Spokane that can take you to Seattle, Portland, and even Northern California for those of you who don't like flying. Although the roads here will take you where you want to be quickly, the city does seem to be slow at fixing and maintaining roads. The city recently launched an initiative to stop people using studded snow tires, to help prevent the wear on the roads, but this can only go so far. Also, unless you live and work in downtown or the surrounding neighborhoods, you probably will be driving most places rather than walking or riding a bike. There are relatively few cycle lanes in Spokane, and with the one-way systems, it can be intimidating for a cyclist who has to cross four lanes of one-way traffic. I would love to see more cycle routes here in Spokane, and with such an active, outdoorsy population, I'm sure this will happen at some point in the future. The third thing I love about Spokane is the natural beauty of it. Take a look at Spokane Falls in downtown, take a drive around Medical Lake, climb Mount Spokane, and you'll be amazed. In every direction, Spokane is gorgeous. We have pine tree forests, huge open wheat fields with those little red barns, and really impressive architecture in the city. The style of home here is also really cool. There's an abundance of 100-year-old craftsman-style homes, there's mid-century ranches, modern homes, and everything in between. So what can be the downside of a naturally beautiful city, you ask? While the weather here may be on average a little bit drier, and a little bit warmer than places like Seattle, this does have its downsides. For example, if you want to maintain a nice yard, you'll need a good sprinkler system, particularly in the drier months like July. This dryness can also cause forest fires, which has a direct impact on air quality. So if you or anyone in your family is sensitive to that kind of thing, that's just another thing to consider before moving to Spokane. It also snows a fair bit here in Spokane, but I must admit the city are actually pretty good at plowing the roads, particularly the steep roads. Look up Freya Snow Pile Up on YouTube if you want to see why this is so essential. I'm from the UK originally, so I'm used to having a little bit more rain, but having clear skies more frequently is nothing to complain about for me. Okay, the fourth thing I love about Spokane is the food and drink scene here. Spokane is a hipster's paradise, so there are more breweries and brew pubs here than you could possibly imagine. Each have their own atmospheres, venues, and a lot of them put on events that you can sit and enjoy as well. It's a great way to keep the family occupied or to meet up with friends for trivia night, for example. New restaurants are popping up all the time here in Spokane, and the standard of restaurant is actually really high. My personal favorite is the South Hill Grill, Go ahead and let them know I sent you, maybe they'll give me a free French onion dip sandwich sometime. Who knows? I plan on reviewing a ton of bars and restaurants on this channel, so please check back for more. Okay, well what can be the downside to having a good food and drink scene? Well, the area around the best bars and restaurants in Spokane seem to have the highest house prices. For example, the area around Manitou Park has tons of great bars, restaurants, cafes, but also has some of the highest property prices in Spokane. Having said that, relative to places like Seattle and particularly the Bay Area, 
the properties are still very affordable. Okay, the fifth thing I love about Spokane is the culture. Spokane is a big city with a small town feel. That was the first impression I had when I moved here. When you dig a little deeper though, you realize it's not really a city, it's a bunch of small neighborhoods linked together, each with their own culture, own architecture, and own style. Take Brown's edition, for example. It's full of large mansion style homes that have been converted into apartments. It's got a high walkability score and tons of bars. A little ways away from that, you've got the Manitou Rockwood area full of craftsman style homes with neatly manicured lawns, mature tree-lined streets, and beautiful parks. There are some downsides to this though, and there are some things wrong with Spokane. Petty property crime is relatively high in Spokane, unfortunately. It would take you a quick Google search to figure this out, so I'd rather hear my take on it first. I follow my own neighborhood on the Ring app to keep up to date with what's going on in my neighborhood, and I see that a lot of this type of crime is opportunistic and takes place at night. So if you keep your car locked, don't leave anything on display in your car, keep your garage shut, you'll reduce your chances of being a victim of crime dramatically. And this also isn't putting people off moving here. I'm seeing more and more people moving here looking for the lower cost of living, the active lifestyle, while still maintaining all the opportunities a big city has to offer. It's not difficult in a day to talk to someone from a different state and even a different country. It's a really cool place to be. Okay, those are the five topics I wanted to discuss the pros and cons for. Now I want to talk about a few things that are, you know, down the middle that could be personal to you. The first thing I want to talk about is weed. To me, weed doesn't register as something I'm interested in. However, if you are interested in smoking marijuana, it is legal here if you're 21 and over, so you can do it safely, legally, without a card. For people moving from an area where weed's illegal, it may be a little weird to drive past a dispensary and smell weed, but it's just something to keep in mind that there may be a bit of culture shock there if you haven't dealt with that before. All right, the next thing that could be good or could be bad is the wildlife around here. Now, I used to live in Arizona where everything is spiky and wants to hurt you. I owned a small dog when I lived out there and I was always worried about snakes, scorpions, predatory birds, coyotes, mountain lions, and things like that. Here in Spokane, we have deer and wild turkeys, and that's pretty much it. Sure, there are bears and bigger animals like elk that occasionally wander into the city, but from my experience, they tend to mind their own business and stay outside the city. All right, the final thing that could go either way, depending on your circumstances, is income tax. Factoring in an already low cost of living, no income tax sounds like a big win for Spokane. However, when one tax is lower, another tax will be higher. Here in Spokane, we have 9.2% sales tax. Property taxes are also a little bit higher than other places and sit around the 1.2% mark. I really hope you liked the video. Like I said, I'm a real estate agent in Spokane. I've got tons more videos coming on moving Spokane, living in Spokane, things I wish I knew before I moved here, bar and restaurant views and tons of other stuff. So please check back to see more. Please subscribe and leave me a comment with your pros and cons about Spokane. If you're thinking about relocating here, give me a call, shoot me a text, send me an email, and I'll be happy to work with you and answer any questions that you might have. Until the next video, thanks for watching.